Hello everyone and welcome to Fan Dummies. I'm Greg. And I'm Aaron. In this video, we are going to review season one of Invincible on Amazon Prime Video. If you want even more Invincible content, you should check out our full length podcast episodes, which we'll link in the description below. Plus we have lots of other videos if you check out our channel. All right, let's get into reviewing season one as a whole. So Aaron, why don't you start? What did you think? I really loved season one from the animation style to the soundtrack, Mm -hmm. to the characters, to the story arc. I just really enjoyed it. Yeah. I I have to say that I liked it much better than I thought I was going to. Mm -hmm. Because after we had watched episodes one through three, I liked it, but it was like a six, like a six out of 10. Uh Uh-huh. I love it when we get superhero series that aren't from Marvel or DC Comics. I mean, those are usually well-known characters that we've seen over and over. But when a company is able to, you know, make new superhero stories and they're based on comics, I think that's really cool. And we're getting more and more of them. Like we've got the Umbrella Academy. We got the boys. Mm -hmm. It's Invincible. And we're going to get Jupiter's Legacy. In a couple weeks here. Yeah. Those are the comics I'm talking about or the superhero shows or. Yeah. Umbrella Academy is really different, but the other ones you mentioned are all kind of, well, they're kind of parodies off of the DC comics. Yeah. But they're still not made by DC. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Jupiter's legacy is kind of like that too, Mm -hmm. which we'll talk about when we get there. Yeah. But definitely the boys. I mean, like black noir and. And, you know, Homelander is a complete parody of DC. Mm -hmm. But this Omni-Man is, you know, a Viltrumite. So it could be, you know, there are parallels with the Kryptonians. Oh, yeah. But, you know, he doesn't have like laser vision and, you know, he doesn't like breathe cold and he can't like hear things from far away. So it's not quite the same. I think it's different enough that it's. It's pretty interesting. And I think this is probably my favorite non DC superhero series. Yeah. Or non DC and Marvel, I should say. Yeah. I think so too. It doesn't seem like a title that only exists because the source material of DC and Marvel. Like, you know, it's like not a derivative of those. Yeah. But think about it DC and Marvel, they have a lot of the same characters as well. Like they've copied off. You know, each other over the years. So I really liked Omni Man's story arc. He starts off a good Viltrumite helping out Earth, but then there's a huge twist and he turns evil. And we see him turn evil pretty early, you know, in the show, but we don't actually find out to this last episode why. I thought that was a really neat story arc with Omni Man and. Yeah, the funny thing about this whole character is Omni-Man is absolutely evil from a human perspective. Mm -hmm. But from his perspective, I think he feels like he's doing them a favor. Yeah. Like this is the best possible thing that could happen to them. It's kind of the imperialistic colonization type mentality. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, that's what he knows. Yeah. That's what he was taught. Yeah. I think it's, I mean, it's bad for earth, but you know, from his perspective, he probably can't imagine why earth wouldn't want to be part of the Viltrumite empire. You know, Mm -hmm. like it's probably unbelievable to him. Yeah. It's the greatest thing he can think of. (laughs) But it took him a long time to turn bad though. I mean, he's been on earth for over 17 years because Mark is 17. Yeah. I can't, really understand what the trigger was that he decided now's the time. Was it that Mark finally had powers and he figured he has to get him trained up? Yeah, maybe. Or else he would become a rival. Yeah. He has to turn him into a real Viltrumite. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I really liked Mark's story arc as well. Him starting out with no superpowers And then getting his superpowers while going to high school and having to interact with his friends and hide his superpowers from his friends and his girlfriend. And then having to defend the Earth with his new found superhero powers. 
I mean, he has to do all that, and he's only a high schooler. And then with his dad being, you know, the most powerful superhero, Mm -hmm. the most well-known and loved superhero on Earth. I just really like that. So I liked his whole story arc. Yeah, he had to grow up really fast, Mm -hmm. and he just wants to go to college and and do well, and it's not going to happen. Yeah. (laughs) But Mark, he's got to be my favorite character on the show. And I wish we would have got more episodes as well. We got eight episodes and it went by so fast. Like we got the first three and then the other five after that. Yeah. For the next five weeks. Yeah. It went by way too fast. I'm equally upset that we didn't get them all at once Mm -hmm. because I feel like binging this would be amazing and we probably should still watch it again. Yeah. We'll definitely watch it again before season two comes out. Just to kind of get reacquainted with it, because by then it'll be a long time since we've read the comic. It's probably going to be a good year or more until we get season two, because it sounds like they don't have anything written or anything yet. Well, I mean, the source material exists, but uh, yeah. Maybe they have the outlines. Yeah, we were watching an interview with uh, Kirkman. He basically said, you know, seven seasons would be about perfect for the Mm storyline. And we know we already have three. So <laughs> seasons two and three are, are purchased by Amazon. So yeah. we should, should be good there. What did you think of season one, Greg? Well, I agree with what you said. Mm-hmm. I really was worried that they were going to butcher the comics. You know, the, they were going to really go crazy with changing things up and, you know, quote unquote, modernizing it and doing other things to the source material, Mm -hmm. which the source material is really great. But honestly, the first sets of comics are not the best comics for Invincible. Like it gets so much better. Uh And I think it's hard for anyone to believe that after they see this season, but it gets much better. Like the the coolest stuff that's about to happen hasn't happened yet. I really enjoyed season one. I think the rewrites, what they changed were improvements, like how they rearranged the story structure. A lot of the things they did with, with Mark and uh, what we'll talk about in a little bit with the episode eight, the ending, the big battle. I think all of that was really amazing. I think they really thought it through. Mm-hmm. They improved the dialogue considerably. You know, the writers fleshed out Omni Man's character a little bit better. You kind of felt his emotions more. Mm-hmm. You know, so overall, I would say the season one was better than I expected. You know, we'll get into later into the podcast, you know, the specific examples of, of how we think the show was better than the comics. Mm-hmm. I really think they ended the season in the perfect spot because now you have to watch season two because you have to know what happened to Omni Man. Oh yeah. Where did he go? Is it over? Is he never, has he ever come back? Did he go get the Viltramite Armada? Uh Uh-huh. You know, is he, is he going to toss the moon at the earth? Like what's he doing? Yeah. It's a pretty big cliffhanger. How, how long can he hold his breath? (laughs) All those things, I think, were, were really fun. You know, in the comics, it just kind of goes right through that. If I remember right in the comics, like after this big battle, the comics get into things like origin stories and, and stuff like that. So like the pacing of the comic is completely different. Mm. And I think not as good. We'll just kind of see what happens here. Okay, so out of five stars, what do you give this season one? Probably a four. Yeah. I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a 4.5. A 4.5? Yeah. Because for what it is, which is an animated superhero show, I don't think it could have been done much better. I mean, especially the last episode, the last two episodes. Yeah. Yeah. It really took the source material, I think, and improved it. Well, maybe I should just give it a five then. You can, as long as you can back it up. You tell me why. (laughs) I mean, compare it to the boys. Well, I always compare everything to the Mandalorian. Yeah. Which I gave it a five. Yeah. 
So I think a four is really strong. This is not the Mandalorian, but I did see <laughs> an amazing Instagram post, but it was Nick Offerman oh. in an Omni Man outfit. You mean this one? <laughs> oh my gosh. Is that not the I'll greatest? I'll put it on the screen. I'll is, that the, a... is that the greatest thing you've ever seen? Yeah. That's pretty great. I saw that and I'm like, could Invincible be live action? Because that looks like what I would think that he would look like. They need to build the whole series around Nick Offerman as Omni Man. <laughs> the whole series. Like, just take it live action. That's funny. Yeah, that's by Boss Logic. Here. As a matter of fact, they need to rewrite Invincible so that Nolan's job is at Parks and Rec during the day. <laughs> 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 and that instead of going to the woodworking shop, he's Omni Man. That's funny. Wait, Omni Man, he doesn't have a day job. He's an author. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, because they said after they're saying that he's dead, so his books are going to sell even more. Exactly. And I was like, that's an artist's life for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the artist actually doesn't make the money. <laughs> yeah. You just leave the art to the family. Mm hmm. Anything else you want to say about this review? I really enjoyed Invincible season one and I'm looking forward to season two and three. Yeah. If you haven't watched this and you've gotten this far in the podcast or in the video, go watch it. I mean, you could have watched a quarter of the episode just <laughs> in what you spent here. Yeah. Why are you watching us? <laughs> go watch them. Come back. Thank you so much for watching Fan Dummies. We want to hear what you think of season one. Even if you write a paragraph completely misspelled, filled with emojis, exclamation points, all caps, we'll attempt to read it and reply. Won't I, we, Aaron? I prefer all hearts, like heart, 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 heart. Yeah. But yes, we will reply, hopefully. If you're new here, we talk about superheroes and science fiction every single week. Please hit that thumbs up, hit the subscribe, hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. You can find us at Fan Dummies on all social media, and we would love to hear from you. Bye. Bye. We have lots of Invincible content. You just have to click up here on one of these. There's lots of stuff. Good ones, too. Like, really cool. Probably better than the one you just watched. All right. Bye-bye.